If you're about to start a communications degree or you're in your communications degree or you're about to graduate from your communications degree, I'm here to tell you your degree is not useless and you will find a job. This is Q&A, but Canadian. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Cheyenne and if you're new here, I make social and political commentary videos. I wanted to make this video for two reasons. One, my video on everything you need to know for a communications degree is going viral. Second, the number one video for jobs for a communications degree is this guy. He literally says he did not go to school for communications. So what I'm going to do in this video is tell you what fields of study you can get into with a communications degree, how it relates to what you learned in school, and then the entry level positions you can apply to just after graduation. The number one job that you will see for communications degrees is a social media coordinator. So if you're somebody that's always online, always on your explore page timeline, you just understand how the algorithms work, this is a job you should really consider because it's so easy to get after school. What you're gonna be doing in this job is literally creating a bunch of content at one time and then scheduling those posts throughout a week, a month, whatever, to be consistent, to feed the algorithm, to want to show your content to other people. In your classes, you probably learned about semiology, about creating meaning through images and associations. That's basically social media coordination because essentially you're gonna create a brand by posting images and having captions add meaning to your images and then kind of build a community around that. So if you're working for a company that's selling a product or a service, you're gonna wanna use social media to like interact with the people that use those products or services. So this job is creative, but also analytical because you can't just post stuff and not get interactions. Like you wanna make notes of what is working with your community and what's not working with your community and then keep doing things that are working. So this was my first job after school. Um, to be honest, I didn't like it because I'm more of like an abstract thinking person. I don't really like paying attention to details and stats and analytics, but if that's something that you like, then this would be perfect for you. Again, like you can do this for anybody. And if you wanna approach small businesses and just ask them to like do their social media so you can build a portfolio, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to have you do that. And then you have something to work with when you're going for job interviews. In my last year at university, I was a social media coordinator for a nonprofit dance company. And then because I had that experience, I was able to get the job that I got after school. So you're going to want to have design skills if you're going to go for these jobs because if a company can look at you and they know you can create content, take photos, and do all the analytics, they'll hire you over somebody that just does the content scheduling. So I'm talking Adobe Creative Suite, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. If you've mastered Canva, it's time to upgrade. So you also want to get certified in some sort of content scheduling software. Hootsuite's kind of the biggest one, but I'm sure there's others out there that you can like look into. So social media coordinator, that's the entry level job title. If you want to continue down this path for a career, it probably won't just be social media that's under your control as you move up. Mostly because social media is literally only one small part of a company's marketing strategy. So the higher you move up in this field, the less and less control you'll have over like the small details of social media and you'll start adding more campaigns from different areas of a marketing strategy under your responsibilities. So this brings me to my second job, marketing coordinator. This is a job where you'll be working under a marketing manager or a product manager and you'll basically be executing a marketing strategy. So this job will be tricky because you're gonna be competing with people who are graduating with a bachelor's of commerce in marketing for a marketing coordinator position. So what you wanna do is look at the job description and see if they're looking for a marketing communications person or a marketing business person. When you do marketing from a business perspective, you're looking at the four Ps, price, product, place, and promotion, right? As a communication major, we're really only that last part, the promotion part. So if you see in the job description that they're looking for somebody that knows inventory management, they know distribution channels, they know how to like use SAP to price products and all these contract prices and stuff like that, like. That's not, that's not us. <laughs> but if you're looking at the job description, it talks about brochures, email campaigns, social media, um, writing copy for posters or website copy, website management and maintenance. That's a communications, that's a promotion marketing position. This is a really great position to get after school because you're working directly under the person that is the next step in your career. This also makes it easier to get promoted because you work so closely with the person that's probably leaving and you be filling their position. So the last thing I wanna mention about being a social media coordinator or a marketing coordinator is that you need to pick an industry that you're actually interested in. So if you're really into fashion or you're really into makeup or you're really into like cars or something, go into that industry and ask them to be a marketing coordinator or apply to positions to be a social media coordinator because you already have 
have knowledge about the products and services that you're trying to market. The third job you can get with a communications degree is anything in an advertising agency. So advertising agencies are probably the most direct link between the job market and a communications degree. And that's because these agencies literally just do promotion. So when I was talking about the four P's of marketing, they're just doing promotion. This is a really good field for somebody that likes a lot of variety because if you're doing social media coordinating or marketing coordinating, for one company, you're basically just working with their products or services. And that could just be one product. Maybe they have a product line, but really just those services and products. So if you're working for an advertising agency, you have multiple companies coming to you at a time. You're gonna be working on different industries in a given year. So you know, you get to switch it up a little bit. The other great thing about an advertising agency is that they hire recent grads like nobody's business. They literally want people out of school. They want people with no experience, but you should be warned. The reason they want people out of school is because there's a really high turnover rate in advertising agencies. You kind of work hard all the time and it's really easy to burn out. So they kind of need people to fill the people that you know, didn't make it. Yikes. So if you're looking at an advertising agency, make sure you look like around Christmas time because when I was doing my interviews for an advertising agency, I had to fill that out by January. Like the beginning of January, or end of January. It was like really, really early. Don't go and finish your April exams and then think you can go get an internship at an ad agency in May. Like you need to be looking at their websites from before and get that interview in. Also another tip, if they ask you for a video interview, like they give you a list of questions and they want you to record yourself answering those questions, you need to show that you have a personality. Like if you're boring, they're not gonna hire you. I'm sorry. So there's two jobs in an ad agency that I think work really well with a communications degree. The first one is a media buyer, but this involves a lot of math. So if you don't like math, so what a media buyer does is that they get a persona, like a person that the client wants to target. And then they think about where does this person get their media from? Like what TV shows are they watching? What radio stations are they listening to? What magazines are they reading? What influencers are they following? And then they go and buy advertising spots in these places to get that person's attention. So in communications, you probably talk a lot about identities and how they're formed based on the cultural interactions you have. So this comes into play when you're buying media spots because you have to think about where would this person get their information from? The second job that I can think of that works really well with a communications degree in an ad agency is a strategist position. So to be a strategist, you really have to be like head in the clouds, abstract thinker. What happens is a client will come, they've already done their market research, they've already done their marketing strategy, and they've decided they wanna sell this product to this person with this message. So as a marketing strategist, you're basically taking all this information and you're like, okay, how do we portray this message? Like what kind of campaign can we build to get this message across? So you're coming up with slogans, you're coming up with imagery, colors, typography, like you're doing all of the visual aspects and writing aspects to this campaign. But once you come up with all of this stuff, like you're done, like you pass it over to the designers and then the media buyers and they execute the campaign. Like you're just coming up with the ideas. So as a strategist, you're basically working with people's reference systems. So the client will give you their target audience and you have to like immerse yourself in this target audience lifestyle. You wanna understand what makes them tick. Like you wanna be able to observe the target audience and figure out what messages and wording and images will make them want to buy the client's product. So the next job that you can get with a communications degree is for all my boring people out there, all my people who just want a nice job with cushy benefits, don't want no fuss, no drama, and this job is corporate communications. So in this job, you're basically writing really boring stuff about an organization's future, their mission, their core values. You're writing it for investors, for analysts, for you know other businesses that are interacting with your business. You're writing it for a press release. Your company just did something amazing and they want the whole world to know. So this stuff is very dry. It's very to the point, straightforward. There's no like creativity per se, but for everything it lacks in fun and spontaneity, it makes up for in salary. So an entry level job title for corporate communications would be communications assistant, communications officer, communications strategist. Like you'll see communications. Like they're so boring. They don't even try to come up with a nice job title. The fifth area you can get into with a communications degree is public relations. It's about creating cultural associations between your client and a target audience 
through the media. That's why you see people on talk shows, on the news, you see them featured in magazines, you see them on radio shows. So as a public relations assistant, you're gonna wanna have a really broad knowledge of different media outlets for a certain subject. So if you're into food, you're gonna wanna know who the food publications are, who the food social media accounts are, so that when you have a client in the food industry, you know where to put them to get them in front of the people that they wanna get in front of. The other really big thing about public relations is reputation management. So think about it this way. If a company does something that's terrible, like, I don't know, the BP oil spill, remember that? When they do something like that, you're not gonna use marketing to fix your reputation. You're gonna use public relations because you're no longer selling something. You only use marketing when you're selling something. Public relationships is about your image, your brand image to the world, what people think about your company. So this has a lot to do with storytelling, changing people's perspectives by adding new information, creating new meanings for your company. So this relates to what we learned in a communications degree because we're talking about storytelling, cultural associations, creating meaning, semiology, all of that stuff is related to public relations. So the entry level job title will be like public relations assistant, PR coordinator, like just search PR entry level jobs. So the sixth area that you can get into with a communications degree is anything in the government. So if you think about it, governments are always trying to figure out how to communicate what they're doing to their constituents. So in that sense, you need a communication major because you're trying to translate government talk to like regular people talk. So the perfect example is literally COVID-19. The government knew what they had to do to stop the spread of the virus. And then they went about communicating it to the public in a way that they would understand. Like nobody knew what social distancing was before COVID. Essential workers did not really exist before COVID. Like these are new words that we've learned that we've added to our vocabulary because of the situation that we're in. And that was all done through communications. So the other side of the government where you can also use a communications degree would be consulting and lobbying. So in this situation, you're sort of a mediator between companies and the government, but your job is a little tricky and this is where communications degrees come in because you understand that the government has to sell this to their constituents. So sure, your company might want X, Y, and Z, but if the government doesn't see X, Y, and Z as being beneficial to re-election, they're not gonna do it. So you as a lobbyist need to figure out how what benefits your company can also benefit this elected official. So for, from a consultant perspective, you might not be working directly with the government, maybe you're just working with businesses, but you also need to be able to communicate how one thing can be beneficial for the business even though they're not already doing that. So the last field that you can get into with a communications degree that might not be a direct link, but might work for some people based on your personality is human resources. So for my research for this video, I learned that you only really need an HR certificate to work in HR. So where a communications degree comes in handy is that you learn what makes people tick. So HR is about creating a workplace environment where people feel safe and want to perform well in their jobs. So if you're somebody that likes to read the room, you like to people watch, you like to understand why people act a certain way, this might be really good for you because you learn in communications degrees why they act this way, like what their cultural backgrounds are that would make them behave like this. And then you can sort of like create teams through HR to make your company perform better just a thought. Thanks for watching my video. I hope it was helpful for you. Let me know in the comment sections if I gave you some information that likes you feel a little less hopeless about graduation. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to make more videos about culture and communication studies and how they all work together. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.